On today's show, is Cole Baudouin the perfect contender's pick? We'll look at that and a lot more about his game on today's episode of Locked On NHL Prospects. You are Locked On NHL Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to Locked On NHL Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. On this podcast, we break down everything prospects related for you five days a week, Monday to Friday. I'm Hattie Kalakesh, Director of North American Scouting for Dauber Prospects, with Sebastian High, Head Scout and Director of European Scouting for Dauber Prospects. And on today's show, we'll be breaking down Cole Baudouin's game in detail uh, for today's episode. Uh, we'll talk about the profile for formal size, handedness, uh, and puck skills, especially in the first segment. Break down the skating, the hands, uh, shooting, passing, all that good stuff. Uh, in our second segment, we'll look at the more intricate stuff. So the um, decision making, the habits, the toolkit, all that good stuff. And then in our final segment, we'll look at the overall uh, projection with Cole Boudouin, the upside, which team would be the, f- the best fit. Uh, and a lot more. Before we get into any of that, though, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe. Leave us a comment, letting us know what you want us to talk about next and what you thought of the episode. And if you're listening on your favorite podcasting platform, please leave us a rate and review, and make sure to make us your first listen of the day. So let's get things started right away with Cole Baudouin. He's been an interesting prospect and a prospect that I find myself liking more and more despite my usual preference for kind of those higher upside swings. Uh, But talk me through the profile with Cole Baudouin, the size, the handedness, uh, where he's been playing, how many points he's been putting up, all that good stuff to get us started here. Yeah, so Cole Baudouin is a six foot two, two hundred and one pound left shot centerman who's been playing with the Barry Colts in the OHL. And this season, through sixty seven games, he scored twenty eight goals and sixty two points, which is a pretty solid production. And he already was trusted with an A on his jersey, so he was part of the captaincy uh, group there in Barry. And uh, he also earned himself a call up with the Team Canada U18 roster, and was a decently big piece of that gold medal winning squad, even scoring a goal there in the gold medal game against the United States and in the tournament as a whole. Through seven games, he put up two goals, two assists, or four points. So uh, he's a he's a very fun prospect in that he's extremely projectable to the NHL. He plays a real two way game. He is a face off machine. He's definitely trust trusted a lot with those, those defensive zone draws, but also playing penalty kill minutes. He's really solid defensively. The defensive habits are refined. Uh, the defensive impact is strong, and offensively he may not be dynamic as such, but he has a very clearly defined role as a net front presence that he's able to execute very well uh basically the way he plays the game already could be how he plays the game in the nhl there's very little projection that has to be done stylistically to get him to that nhl level it's more just improving the things he's already good at um but yeah he, he's a very interesting prospect that is more likely than not going to be a, a top 32 pick come nhl draft day because this is a profile player that teams are going to eat up and uh I think a lot of that goes down to just how he thinks the game. He's a very smart player. He's very efficient with his movements, and he's very consistently in the right place, exactly where you, where you expect a player with his style of play to be, uh, whether that be a passing lane defensively or to be right at the goal mouth in the offensive zone. But to get us started here with the puck skills, let's talk a little bit here first with, about the shooting, which I think is one of the bigger strengths in the puck skill category with this player. For sure. Uh, shooting and passing are both for me on, on, on equal grounds, but he is definitely a, a player with more of a shooter's mindset. Like you mentioned, he's a lot, he spends a lot of time around the net. Um, but I especially like his ability to get open quickly to fire off a shot quickly. He's not just a garbage goal machine. He's able to wire shots from mid range really, really accurately and powerfully. Um, that goes through the, the raw power that he brings to the game. I mean, he's got a lot of physical strength, um, so his mechanics aren't necessarily the most polished on his shot, but he gets a lot of mustard behind it. And he's the type of player who, um, can release quite quickly as well. He doesn't need a lot of space and he doesn't care if the puck is, is dusted off or not. He's shooting it, um, which, which adds to the threat as well. So th- th- I, I think the shooting is better mainly because of the mindset, but in terms of the, 
the raw mechanics, the raw ability. I think the shooting and passing are at the same level, which isn't necessarily the highest level. Um, I'd give both a five and a half, um, maybe a six at best. Um, but still, I mean, the shot is great. I, I really, really like, like I said, the, the consistent ability to get open, the ability to shoot from mid range and the, the constant availability around the net, the small details he brings, it all works really, really well together. We'll get into the toolkit a bit more in the second segment, but the shooting in isolation is pretty good, but I've been a fan of the passing. Um, the passing has been really good, especially the small area playmaking, especially around the boards. Um, for me, Cole Baudouin is one of the best players, uh, the best prospects in the draft at taking 50-50 puck battles and turning them into lengthy offensive zone possessions with a smart six foot pass at, at most, you know, just those small little passes, you know, recovering a puck off the back end, just kind of slipping it behind him to, uh, to a forward who, you know, he just reads the game really well, scans a lot. And that helps with the passing. I think that's a great part of his game. Uh, and, a, and I think between the shooting and the passing, I think the passing gels even better with this game than his shooting, his shooting um, mechanics and his shooting habits. Um, the passing gels so well with his ability to retrieve pucks. It's a great, great part of his game. But the handling for me, I'd say it's below average. Would you agree? I would. Uh, he definitely keeps his puck touches relatively short as a result of that. And yeah. uh, as you mentioned, he makes very quick decisions when he does have a puck on his stick, whether it be a very quick pass to keep that possession going, to keep the cycle going. He's a very good cycle passer. I would agree with you on that. I do think that the playmaking down low is perhaps a little bit more limited than the goal scoring down low is. And mm -hmm. that's part of the reason why I see him more as a goal scorer at the NHL level, because I think he's going to spend the bulk of his offensive zone time right around the goal. Now that's, that is where he is at his most effective. It's where you can really leverage uh, that, that, that screening ability but also that puck retrieval uh, skill. So, yeah. uh, but, but but to go back to the handling, I, I'd probably give it like a four grade. It's not like a, a massive detriment to his game, but it's far from a strength. And uh, the way he, he plays the game also certainly circumvents a lot of the need for that high-end handling skill. He keeps the puck touches short. He's often the yeah. third forward into the offensive zone or the first if it's, if it's on the four check, right, and going in for those puck battles. But he's not the, the player that's, that's leading rushes uh, in order to to, to beat defenses on his own with his handling ability. He, he likes to score those goals from in tight more than anything else. For sure. And I think it's important to note as well that just because a tool is below average uh, in terms of NHL projection doesn't mean that it's harmful to the player's game. Like, Cole exactly. Bedouin doesn't need high-end handling. He doesn't need that to be a good thing, you know, a good element of his game. Because as you mentioned, he keeps his puck touches short. He makes simple plays. Um He's a meat and potatoes player. He doesn't need the flash and pomp and circumstance of a of a Nivon Demidov. You know, he that's not his style of game. He's not going to rush the puck up the ice, dangle through three guys, and get the puck on net. Um, he's a give and go, move into space, get down low, battle for pucks type of player. And for those type of players, below average handling, not too much of a concern. Speaking of which, the skating, same issue, same thing there. Um, it's below average for me. I'd say it's a four four and a half tool. I don't care. It's good enough for what he does. It's it's he gets first the pucks because he reads the game well and he competes really, really hard. Once he gets there, he rims the puck. He gets it off the boards. Um, he again turns 50-50 battles into lengthy offensive zone possessions. Do I mind that he doesn't doesn't do it as quickly as other prospects? Do I do I mind that he's not a a blazing speed type of guy? No, because it's not what he needs for his game. And he, I think he's circumvented his lackings with exactly the type of game that he should have developed. And he has, which yeah. is great. It's really, really good for his game. That's what makes him such an, an easy projection is that all the things that other prospects who have the same weaknesses haven't learned. He has, which is really, really important. Um, I, I, will, of, I will also add uh, with the skating specifically, he has a pretty high stride rate and you alluded to that yeah. with the high motor, but uh, he's a player that actually wins a lot of like foot races uh, like on like, on the track against his teammates. Uh, and so he has a very high foot speed and, and yeah. really high stamina. So he can definitely win some races. It rarely looks pretty. The stride mechanics are definitely not very refined, but on top of that, the last element here of the tools, the physicality, this is a big strength 
strength in his game. He is a freakish athlete. He has like the, I think he said like a deadlift record for the Barry Colts organization or something earlier this season. It was a video that Skeps thought it was faked because it was that impressive. (laughs) I think it was like what a 400 pound or 500 pound deadlift or something absurd. 400 pound sumo deadlift. It's just ridiculous. There we go. That that makes no sense. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. insanity right and his coaches call him like like the hardest working player they've ever worked with period uh like not just exclude ex- ex- exclusively for this group spe- like specifically but ever uh a lot of off ice or like those like like work ethic and and physical and athletic abilities are massive strength here with Colbo Dwayne, whether it be the stamina or the the raw strength. And he also, when he plants himself in an area, he does not get budged off of that spot. He is a he's built like a tree stump. Uh, so when he's at the net front, it is very difficult for defenders to clear him out of that area. And he consistently is able to leverage that ability to screen goaltenders very effectively, and uh, is certainly annoying to play against as a result. Absolutely. Uh, but that's our first segment. Don't want to get into our second where we break down the more intricate stuff in Baudouin's game, the decision making, the habits, and the toolkit. We'll get into that in just a second, but just before, a quick word from our sponsors at FanDuel. It's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks to, spread, to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and far more, including single game parlays, which are my personal favorite. Especially when you're attending an event live, they can ramp up the excitement even more as they allow you to hand select whatever type of stats that you want to personally swing on and put them all together into one single bet. Visit Fandle.com slash lockdown and make every playoff shot count. Fandle, America's number one sportsbook. All righty, so moving on to our second segment, we'll be talking about Cole Baudouin's, uh toolkit, habits, and decision-making. I want to start off with the toolkit because I think we alluded to it earlier. I think he's compensated for his lackings really, really well in exactly the way that I would like a player with these specific weaknesses to um, kind of move forward with their career. And that makes him a super projectable player because you can see already how he can play the game that he plays at the NHL level. And I, I think it's, you know, regarding the the skating deficiencies, it's not just the mechanics, it's the lack of pure agility of um, stop and go acceleration, his ability to get off the wall quickly, um, I think isn't as refined as other prospects. And that's fine because again, he's compensated for that in exactly the way that he should. This is a player who keeps his puck touches short, who cycles pucks effectively, who's consistently making the right plays at the right time, Um, And again, he wins puck races due to having that high stride rate, working harder than a lot of players. In terms of toolkit, um, even though the the hands and the feet aren't always on the same page, it doesn't really matter because he he doesn't have the puck for three, four seconds at a time. He has it for a tenth of a second before the puck's on a teammate stick in the right spot. So I'm not concerned in terms of the the disconnect between the hands and the feet. I think the the hands and the brain work really, really well together, and that that makes up for it for uh, for me. Do you agree? I would. I think, as you mentioned, he has a really like good understanding of his own limitations, and he's adapted his play style really intelligently as a result of that. And uh, as you mentioned, keeping those puck touches short, uh, playing a real give and go style, planting himself at the net front, doing the things that he's really good at, and focusing his game on that. But e- even to extrapolate a little bit uh, on that that that. that that combination of the hands and the brain. I've really liked the way he's able to leverage those two specific tools in the breakout game. He's not a player that generates a ton of zone entries, but he is a zone exit at, like utter machine. Yeah, he consistently gets the puck uh, in the defensive zone and his teammates trust him to lead the breakout by just making the simple right play by, by, by reading the defensive structure and launching play up the correct wing, or perhaps uh, defaulting it back to his defense defenseman to build up play a little bit more slowly but he often acts as a third defenseman in those breakout scenarios and uh definitely plays really well with them in tandem uh to just make sure that 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 possession isn't lost in a breakout attempt so he's not a player that's going to be making all these these hail mary passes uh in the breakout but he will consistently 
retain possession and ensure that the puck gets into the offensive zone uh, with with possession. And uh, again, he's a cycle player. He's an absolute machine on the cycle by, by just being able to plant himself at the net front and make those little one-touch, two-touch plays uh, to keep the cycle going. So he's a very, very projectable player, uh, as I mentioned in, in the first segment. He doesn't have to really adapt the way that his tools interact or the way that he approaches the game itself uh, before hitting the NHL level. Like He is, he is very much already yeah. a bottom six stylistic NHL player. For sure. Um, I think it has a lot to do with habits. You mentioned already, like, to, to get involved in the breakout, you need to be involved defensively. You know, a lot of breakouts start with defensive plays. And Cole Bledouin's effort level on the back check, his ability to um, to time his, his back checks uh, as well. Like, he's not just barreling down the ice on carriers he's timing his his routes he's scanning constantly he's reading the defensive structure he's kind of taking in information constantly and that makes his job super easy once he gets the puck because once he gets the puck he doesn't need to settle it down look up look around see what's going on then hit the right pass he already knows where his teammates are he already knows where his opponents are he's able to just whip around make the right pass skate up the ice and you're gone like he, he makes his teammates job so easy by consistently keeping them into consideration um so this is a player who I, i've been really really impressed especially with habits and decision making like decision making wise like you mentioned his breakout passes very very rarely don't connect very very rarely aren't the right pass um in the offensive zone he cycles the puck at the right moments. He slips it into a pocket behind him off the boards when it's the right time to do that. And he just turns around and zips it to the slot when he needs to. Um, then give and goes, moving to the moving to the net. Those are habit things. You know, just consistently, there's a lot of polished, refined, mature habits in this game. That's what makes him such an interesting prospect for this draft. And, and a player who I think that contenders are going to lap up come draft day. Like, I'd be really, really surprised if by pick 32, he's, he's still on the board. Like, that would, that would surprise me. Um, but at the same time, there are a couple other prospects um, who we're going to have profiles on fairly soon that are going to be in this mold. Guys like Linus Erickson. You know, those kinds of guys who could be in contention with Baudouin in the late first round. But still, I think that of that bunch of players in that mold of projectable bottom six, um, meat and potatoes, um, really intelligent and um, polished uh, forwards, Baudouin for me is at the top of, the, of that bunch, ahead of guys like Tanner Howe as well. We have a profile on coming soon. So there's just so much to love with that bunch. But for me, you know, the fact that Baudouin's habits are this refined, this intelligent, this um, this intricate and, and polished at this age um, adds to the fact that, I mean, like you said, he's a freak athlete. This kid is just next level athletically um, gifted. Just, I mean, we've talked about the likes of Seneca and Yakumchuk and the athletic kind of guys. Baudouin, for me, is at the top of that list. Like, he's next level on that end. And you can really Less see it. is in contention there. I mean, Levshinov's. I mean, there's. I don't even think there's a contention. Levshinov's at the top of that list, but okay, good. In, in okay. Terms, you know, in terms of the guys <laughs> we've done recently, Baldwin is up there, uh, if not the best. In terms of the guys, the profiles we've done recently, like he's he's definitely in that contention. But for me, it's just like when you have a player with with this level of polished habits, you know exactly what role you're giving him. You might as well develop him for that role. Don't try to make him into a top six guy. If he makes it there, sure, but like it'll be by happenstance, by having more puck touches, by potentially improving his skating slightly. But I don't think the objective with Baudouin should be, hey, let's make you a top six play driver. That's not his game. He's been playing this way for the longest while. Might as well go down that route, right? I, I fully agree. And on top of that, I, I don't really think there's a path uh, to a top six role that, that deviates from his current style of play. If he yeah. if he cracks the second line, it'll be because he will double down on his current strength. It will be because he will become one of the better net front presences in the NHL. It's because he will become one of the better defensive centermen in the NHL. Not because he's going to be an offensive driver that wants to get have the puck on his stick a whole bunch every single game. It'll be because you have two wingers on that line that like having the puck and maybe rely on a more defensive focused centerman to open up the ice, create space for them and do some of that, that, that dirty work on the forecheck, the back check and in the defensive zone. Uh, but yeah, I think that 
it's a pretty limited chance that he ends up being a true second line center on a contending lineup. But the three C role is, is, is all his in terms of the upside. I think he could be one of, one of the more reliable, consistent and fan favorite three C's in the entire NHL. If he pans out like he could. Absolutely. And that's our second segment done. We'll get into our third segment where we project Cole Baudouin, look at his upside uh, a bit more in detail and which team would be the best fit for Baudouin, um, especially in the late first round where he's projected. We'll get into that in just a second, but just before a quick word from our sponsors at game time. If you're looking to buy cheap tickets last minute to any event, GameTime is the best place to get that done. GameTime is a great uh, a great app and website that allows you to get uh, tickets up, up until the last minute before the event starts, and sometimes even an hour after it starts, you can still get tickets over at GameTime. Um, they've got a bunch of deals to help you save money. They're obsessed with it. Uh, you can get last minute deals, zone deals, um, and, and a lot more on a game time. Um, and with the game time guarantee, you can make sure you get the best price for your tickets. If you find a ticket in the same section and row for less than what game time has to offer you, uh, game time credits you 110% of the difference. Uh, I got uh, my tickets to the PWHL Montreal playoff game through a game time, and it was an amazing time. Uh, literally last minute, it was 6 p.m. I was I was laying down on the couch with my girlfriend watching some 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 TV, uh, and I looked at game time. And was like, hey, tickets are pretty cheap to the to the episode to, to the game tonight. Uh, looked over at her and went, do you want to go? And we went. Uh, the game ended up at, in third overtime, uh, which, you know, my girlfriend's an early sleeper because I wasn't ideal, but it was a great game. An amazing, amazing game. Um, so game time is amazing for this type of stuff. And it's not just for games, for anything that requires tickets, whether it's comedy, theater, whatever else, game time's got you covered. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply, but again, super simple. You just create an account, redeem the code locked on NHL at checkout for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Alrighty, so let's close this episode off with our projection of uh, Cole Baudouin, what his upside could be, and which team would be the best fit. Let's start with the projection. It's quite easy. Bottom six center, likely a 3C, uh, the type of player that teams fall in love with, that fans fall in love with, um, the type of player who can just make life really easy for the top six, which is a really strong, energetic, uh, tiring shift for the opposition, right? Yeah, 100%. And I think as we, as we've kind of been echoing this entire episode, he's so projectable because the way he plays is just so polished already. And it's just so conducive to that, that type of bottom six role. And I think if we're talking like floor here, we're talking about a fourth line centerman. I don't really see many scenarios where you don't get Boudouin to an NHL caliber player. Like maybe like worst case scenario, he's a type of fourth liner that gets waived. Uh, but like, hey, I, there are worse things in the world than a player that, that that's on the fringe of, of a lineup on a contending team. And if that's the floor and the upside here is a reliable night in, night out 3C, three, three especially if you're a contending team looking to add a player that could play NHL minutes in a year's time, which I really do think Woodwin could. Uh, I, I see uh, many reasons to, to champion a, a pick like this, especially if you're a contending, a contending team picking in that like 25 to 32 range. Yeah, absolutely. I think the main thing for me with Baudouin is um, maybe his transition work could use a bit more work because, again, like he's really good at creating off the breakout. He's really good at just getting the puck out of his zone with control uh, through his opponent, through his teammates rather than through himself. If he can learn to skate the puck out, to trust his hands a bit more, to develop those those tools, because the way he plays right now, he's not developing his hands or his skating, which wouldn't be the worst thing. But it's always an added bonus if you can add a bit more punch to your ability to carry pucks through lines to get around players to make plays that way um that i think is the contingency to adding more upside and in terms of upside if he does polish those elements i could see him be uh, a second line center on a team you know it, it, on a team that that has wingers that are purely offensive i think in terms of a complementary second line center um that would be amazing work you know i'm looking at the likes of you know the new york rangers with the amount of wingers that they have in their system you never know where he ends up, especially in a couple of years time when, you know, a couple of those guys retire, there's going to be all openings and opportunities for me. Cole Baudouin really fits the mold of a player who, I mean, if you put him next to pure play drivers, pure 
transition drivers, those those puck carrying wingers who just blast through the neutral zone, create offensively, and have him do the dirty work at the net front, have him do the dirty dirty work defensively. For me, that's the upside. Um, but even then, I don't think it's likely. I think the likely outcome is a third line center, a bona fide, you know, one of the best third line centers in the NHL. Um, but that's still, I mean. I'm not the type of guy who usually goes for these kind of safe projections. I like my swings. And usually in my first round, you'll see high swings all the way through. Colbo Dwayne's probably going to end up in my first round by the end of the year. I've really, really liked this game all year. And the only thing stopping me from that is my my stubbornness and my insistence on on those high-end swings in the first round. But the more I watch him, the more I love him. And yeah, he's got to be in the first round, right? Yeah, he's he's definitely making a similar climb up my board, and it, it hasn't been because he's necessarily shown me anything more in the last spurt of the year. It's more been a reflection on the value uh, of a player in this mold, and I, I even caught a couple of live viewings of him in Ottawa, and uh, he looked even better live than he did on tape, so... Uh, I've definitely been uh, increasingly convinced uh, in his projection. And I, I think, as you mentioned earlier, there's there's very, very slim chance of him dropping outside the first round come draft day. Like, this is a player that teams are going to adore. And I can already think of a couple of teams that will uh, be very excited to add a potential player like Cole Baudouin. So we can already jump into our, our final little part of the segment here with the uh, NHL team fits and if if we're if we're talking a top 20 there are only two teams that come to mind for me and that would be the New York Islanders at 18 and the Vegas Golden Knights at 19 those are two organizations that love their projectable physical refined defensive potential three C's and the Islanders haven't been taking in the first round forever but uh the what they what they do value oftentimes on draft day are, are players exactly in this mold and with the Vegas Golden Knights they just traded away a player that was not quite as good as Cole Boudoy in my opinion uh in that Thomas Hurdle deal David Edstrom and yeah. uh, the opportunity to add a player of a similar style, but a higher caliber potentially in Cole Baudouin at 19th overall, I think could be very enticing. For sure. I think that's just, you know, and again, Vegas is all about maximizing trade value um, with their picks, right? So Cole Baudouin for me would make sense because um, you're getting a bona fide NHLer. There's no ifs or maybes with, with Baudouin. He's an NHL. There's no doubt about it. Um but yeah, that's really interesting. Uh, I would say the New York Rangers. I don't remember if they have a pick in the first round. Uh, I don't have the. I don't have Tankathon up right now. But. Well, it's thirty second at the moment because uh, uh, they, they were top in the NHL in in the regular season, and they aren't exactly looking like they're on the brink of elimination at this stage either. Yeah, no, for sure. If he's available at thirty two, the Rangers have to pounce on him. He's a great fit for them. Um, but yeah, those are the teams that I think are the most likely to. Um, be really interested in Baudouin and uh, to pick him in the first round. Um, but outside of that, I mean, if we're looking at, let's say by some miracle he's available in the early second round, which of the, which of the, uh, which of the lottery teams do you think is the most likely to take a swing on him? I think the Chicago Blackhawks would adore adding a player like Cole Baudouin. You already have your Connor Bedards, you have your Oliver Moores, you have your Frank Nazer. So you have a lot of players that can play down the middle. I'd assume one of those uh, ends up on the wing, like one of Nazer and uh, Moore ends up playing on the wing with Connor Bedard, which leaves that 3C position wide open. And I think that Cole Baudouin would be an excellent fit there. But that said, I, I think there's a far higher chance he gets picked in that first round. And for instance, I think a name that would make a lot of sense or a team that would make a lot of sense with that too if we're thinking late first round would be the Calgary Flames at 29th overall with with that Vancouver pick that they got in the Lindholm trade I think that the Flames would uh, really love to add a player in the the mold of a Cole Baudouin absolutely and I think it would be a great move but at the same time it is very much like the Flames to uh uh to start a semi-rebuild with a safe pick um but we'll see how that plays out that wraps things up for today's show thank you very much for tuning in if you're watching on youtube make sure to like and subscribe leave us a comment letting us know what you thought of the episode what you think of cold with dwayne if you want your team picking him and what you want us to talk about next and if you're listening on your favorite podcasting platform please leave us a rate and review and make sure to make us your first listen of the day for a second listen of the day make sure to check out locked on sports today through all your news and updates about what's going on around sports and make sure to tune in for our next shows as we continue 
or prospect coverage for the month of May. This has been Hattie Kalakesh with Sebastian High, and we hope you tune in next time.